Okay, in this video I'm going to look at a really quick and very famous blues turnaround. Okay, you sometimes hear it like this. Yeah, let's put it in context. I'm playing a blues in E flat and my final few chords of a chorus work like this. B flat, A flat, and back to E flat. I'm going to turn around, taking me back to the start again, okay? Yeah. Now, it's a good one to know uh, because it's really famous. It's a bit of a cliche, I, I know, but you know, it's quite fun and very recognisable. It's actually quite tricky to play on the piano. Not horrendously difficult, but a little bit tricky. Um, it, it actually started life um, as a guitar turnaround, and on the guitar it's really easy to play. You just slide up a couple of parallel strings and, you know, slide down them alternating. But on the piano it's a bit trickier, mostly because the notes are so far apart. Look at it in E flat here. Let me slow it down. Yeah, so I'm starting with my second on the B flat, fifth on the G, then coming down both notes a semitone or half step. second over onto the A flat, another half step down, and then land on the E flat and the G. Okay, so your starting notes are the fifth note of the scale and the third note of the scale but up an octave. Okay, and it's really good to be able to get that fingering right, although it varies from key to key because it depends on the position of the black notes. You can do it by jumping. Yeah, it depends how you're playing. If you're playing a really sort of spiky, edgy blues, then it doesn't matter if you're jumping and just using your thumb on all the notes. But if you want to be smooth and sort of slick, yeah, you need to get the fingering right. Another way of doing it, again, if you can't quite get the fingering, is use your pedal, but. but you have to make sure that you pedal between each set of notes, else you'll end up with a nasty mush. Okay, let's look at it in another key, in C. So remember, we're using the fifth note of the scale of the key that the blues is in, and the third note, but up an octave. Okay, so we finish a C blues, to jump that one a bit but that's how you would do it to keep it smooth okay bit of a stretch you can see I've got my thumb on the E and my fourth on the C so if you've got small hands or you know you're not very flexible it's actually quite a good one for, for warming up on okay there we go one way you can make it quite interesting is by using crush notes then you have to start thinking about using your pedal to stick it together. But it does give it a little bit of... Um... Okay, it does give it a little bit of character. You just need to need to practice it a little bit. And that's all there is to it. Just, just play around with it in different keys. Yeah, and try and incorporate it into your blues playing now and then. Just as a turnaround. It also is quite good for finishing songs, and, and not always sort of in a blues... Uh, style. Um, I was playing a gig the other night and the last song we did was um, I've Got You Under My Skin, which is, you know, the Cole Porter song, which is an E flat, and I finished it with... Okay, I really like that sort of crushing country night kind of sound. Whoops. Yeah, so play around with that experiment. It's one of those ones that's worth practicing so until you can do it kind of automatically. And it's also a bit of a finger stretcher, so you know, quite good for you if you're trying to strengthen up your fifth and fourth fingers, which you know I'm always going on about as potential weak fingers. Okay, so there we go, that's about all there is to it. Um 
just starting out on blues, remember to check out my book, How to Really Play the Piano, because there's loads of stuff in there on chords and harmony and the whole section on the blues. But in general, if you've got any questions about that or any other questions on kind of pop, blues or jazz piano, just stick them in the comment thread, send me a message on YouTube, that's absolutely fine. I'm always happy to hear from people.